Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas of Style Photography and today I'm going to have a look at editing Fuji JPEGs in Apple's photos. So let's dive right in. Now, today I'm going to be using the new version in High Sierra. So if you haven't already updated, uh, your version of photos may look a little different from the one I'm going to be using, but other than that, uh, it's more or less the same. Now, I'm not going to be going into it in too much detail here, um, but I will do my best to kind of just give you a kind of overview of some certain things. So I have some images here that I'm going to go through and uh, I'm just going to pick a few and edit them and see how we get on. Okay, so let me just see. So these are all JPEGs straight out of the camera. Uh, I haven't done anything with them. I did when I was capturing them, I had certain values turned down such as noise reduction and sharpness. Now, um, I have a blog post on these on my blog about the settings that I use, but it's generally, I turn noise reduction all the way down and I have sharpness set to minus two or minus three. Okay, so we have this shot here, which is a nice landscape shot. It's a bit flat though, and um, it was actually quite a dull day when I shot this. So again, we can start by doing just the kind of basic edits by bringing up the light value and then bringing up the color value. And even straight away, that makes the image much more interesting. You can, of course, tweak the individual values within this. Again, now that we have curves in uh, photos, it makes kind of doing more advanced edits a bit easier. And again, we just bring up a little bit of definition just to kind of make this image pop a bit. Now, the other thing as well is if I want to, I can zoom in here and I can see if I need to add a bit of sharpness to this. So sharpening in photos is it's kind of a it's different from what you're probably used to unless you've used to aperture, in which case it's kind of similar to what the controls you had in aperture. So the values I recommend are I recommend turning fall off right up to one because what that does is controls it's kind of like a gradient fall off between what's in sharp and what's not in sharp and the higher value you have that the smoother the fall off will be and kind of the cleaner your image will be um, the edges value actually controls what is considered edges so the higher you turn that up the kind of the more that will be sharpened um, so I kind of usually go somewhere between 0.5 and 0.25 if I'm sharpening the image um, you don't want to do too much either and then intensity you can kind of just control that depending on what you think now again these are for values for JPEGs um, I'm not actually if I was using a raw file this would be I'd use different values altogether um, but just for JPEGs this actually works and especially if you have sharpness turned down in the camera um, again, depending on the lens you're using, it's going to be different values as well. So if you're using a sharp prime lens, for example, uh, you wouldn't need as much sharpening. In fact, you could probably get away without it. In this case, I've shot using the 18 to 55, which is actually kind of soft um, in some respects. Um, so that's why I've added a little bit of sharpening here. And again, you, you can change the values um, for whatever you want yourself. Um, but that's just kind of what I recommend for this particular use case. Okay, so that's okay. And then we just, we can hit done to get back out of it. Or I can turn on the thumbnails and we can just kind of skip to them this way either. So here's another image. And in this case, it's a little underexposed. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit. Again, I'm using the kind of main light slider at first. And then if I need to, I can go in and tweak the other values individually. Um, in this case, it might need a bit more shadows. I don't want to go too much. It's actually not a bad shot. Um... And again, we can add a bit of definition. And if we bring up the color as well. Uh, the algorithms that Apple is using in photos is actually pretty good. So it doesn't oversaturate colors too much. I've found that some other applications will. It kind of works more like a vibrant slider than anything. Um, although if you, and if you twirl this down, if you show more options. Saturation contrast, which is color contrast, uh, which is interesting things. And cast and kind of allows you to control the tint to an extent and then you've got levels as well um, the contrast is probably a bit much on this so I'm just going to take that back down a bit okay and the other thing you can do as well is you can use extensions um, so I'm going to do a bit more editing with this in Luminar 
So this is kind of handy if you've got if there's something that you can't do with just the basic controls in uh, in photos and you want to use something else. There's lots of different applications now that will give you extensions. So this in this case, I'm using Luminar. There is also something like Pictorial or Polar Image Editor. There is Affinity Photo has an extensions as well. So it actually broadens your options quite a lot. There are some limitations, of course. Um, but let me just do a few edits to this first and then we'll bring it back and I'll talk about that a bit more. So I'm not going to do too much to this because I don't really need to. Um, let me just add some curves. To be honest, when editing JPEGs, you can actually get away with a lot in photos now, especially now that they've added curves and selective editing. So you can do like give you a few saturation controls as well. So it actually gives you a lot more options, which is great. So I'm just going to do a few things to this, just for the sake of it. Again, I'm not going to do too much because I don't want to overprocess this. But let me see, I can do it before and after. So, like I said, I'm not doing much to this. Okay, that'll do for a moment. I'll just hit save changes and this will send it back. Okay, so we're back in photos now. So uh, one of the things I want to show you, just kind of if you're not used to using photos, this will work in if you're using the current version or even the previous version. So say you have this image now, you can get back to the original at any time by going in here and hitting revert to original and uh, that will lose your edits though so what you can do is you can also duplicate one photo so if you do this this will create a new virtual copy of it but it actually keeps the original embedded with that as well so i can still go revert to original on this and that will bring me back to the original file when you duplicate the image it keeps the original version with the duplicate as well so you can actually go back to it and then as I've just done here, I still have the edited version I just did, including the edit I did at the extension. So as you can see, that actually works quite well. So that's just a little tip. In certain cases too, you have to kind of watch for clipped highlights uh, when you're shooting JPEG. So in this example, you can see I've lost the sky, the sky is gone. So in, I uh, shot bracketed in it. So I, am, I actually have a version with the sky still intact. So I can bring this up. Um, and again, the light control actually works really well. And I can bring the color up. But there's also the filters tab, uh, which gives you different kind of preset filters. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't use these very much because they're kind of a one shot thing and there's no way to even um, blend them out. So it's not like you can apply it and then reduce the amount like you can say Instagram, for example. So you kind of apply it and then you're stuck with it. But you can kind of compensate a bit. so. In this case, I can bring back down the contrast, maybe, or maybe bring it up. They're useful sometimes, so depending on what you're trying to do. And then again, you just hit done once you're done. Um, so here's just an example of some of the edits that I have installed here. So you can use this pixel editor as well, Polar Photo Editor, uh, the Radiant Developer, Luminar, uh, Rora HDR, and so on and so on. And then there's all the affinity options. Uh, most of them probably more used to if you're using raw. Uh, however, it's still useful to have. Okay, so let me just give you one more example. So this is an image I shot just on the street. And again, I've kind of, when I was shooting, I was kind of aiming to protect the highlights. So it's a little bit flat. Now I could have gone into the camera and played around with the dynamic range control and so on. And then it overexposed slightly and done all that. But a quick tweak in here. And we have a much nicer looking image. And I can bring up this a little bit and so even something as simple as that is kind of all you need to do now just to show you the new selective color controls as well so I can bring up the blues a bit more and bring down the luminance if I wanted to do like a polarizing effect and um, that's a bit much but you get the idea and I can control the range as well so if you just want a quick way to edit your JPEGs, uh, your Fuji JPEGs, this is a handy way to do it. And of course, then this will sync over to your phone if you have an iPhone um, and you're using iCloud Photos. And uh, it gives you kind of a useful option there as well. So that's pretty much it for this. Um, this has just been a quick look at using um, Apple Photos to edit Fuji JPEGs. Um, I haven't gone into it in a huge amount of detail because there really isn't that whole lot to cover with this. Um, but that just gives you an idea of kind of how I do it. Uh, I don't use it a lot. Um, a lot of the time I'll probably still use even Lightroom when I'm editing JPEGs because it just gives you a bit more control. But with the new version in High Sierra, um, it's actually just even having the curves is a lot more useful. So I hope you found this useful. And uh, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Um, if you want more content, 
follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And um, if you want uh, extra features, then subscribe to us on Patreon and you help us make more videos like this as well. Okay, so thank you very much and talk to you again soon. Bye.